Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of WMA or Artist Spotlight online artist talks with artists presenting their works at the, at the Endless Hunger exhibition. My name is Karolina Raczyńska, and I'll be discussing Patricia Magaliaj's exhibited artwork, her artistic ex practice in the context of the Anthropocene, consumerism, and environment. Patricia Magaliaj is a Lisbon-based artist who uses a wide range of mediums and scales and often produces large series of works. Her work can be seen as drawing with elements of photography, painting and collage. Patricia examines works of other authors, an element of their composition, and creates a discourse between those elements and parts of her own artworks, left over, leftovers by products and discarded materials. Patricia's works presented at the exhibition is a part of an ongoing series. Hello, Patricia. How are you? Hello, everyone. I'm fine. Thank you. Um, shall we start talking about um, your practice and artworks? Um, so let's start with the artwork that's featured. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about it? Um, yes. Um, this work is uh, it's it's called uh, number eleven because it's the eleventh work of uh, a series called the Stadish. Actually, it has no name because I have sometimes trouble giving titles to to my work because uh, for me titles need to be a fundamental part of the work. So it has to be something that really adds to it and not just the name by which I refer to that piece. And so uh, I guess um, maybe it's Magritte's fault because of the Sinepas and Peep painting and because of that controversial uh, painting. Uh, so I started a while to really uh, be very selective about the titles. So however, I call this, this piece Leaflets and it's obvious the reason because uh, when you look at it, it has uh, leaflets uh, entwined with other, other papers. Uh, I'll talk it, uh, a little further about this. Um, but these brochures were left in my mailbox and on my car windshield over the course of a very few months. And so I collected them and uh, later produced uh, this, this piece. So this piece is uh, from a series I call Esteiras which in Portuguese means the um, <clears throat> flat surfaces that are made by intertwining uh, strips of given materials, like the straws, if you think of making baskets. So it's the same, but only produces flat uh, surfaces. So it's, I think it's an ancient craft technique, very worldwide, it's very common worldwide. So probably you know uh, and seen this kind of interweaving. Um, like Carolina said, I've been working in this series for a while. I think the first one I did in 2019. Uh, and I just finished uh, one a couple of months ago. Uh, and I'll be exhibiting it here in Lisbon uh, starting next week. So it's uh, a subject that I'm far from being done. So I keep working on it. Uh, and the reason I name these uh, works in this series Esteiras, it's because they all have in common uh, this particular process, which is to give uh, a brand new use to something that otherwise would be garbage. So cut it into thin strips and then interweaving and assembling the pieces kind of like a puzzle. And doing so, I try to mimic that old craft technique and do things without haste and, and no need to everything to be very equal in the same measurements, no, unlike mass production. So that's, that's it. How big is this artwork? Because we are an online museum, so we cannot actually show the proper scale of an artwork. We can see it in detail, but um, it can be beautifully photographed, but we, we can't actually be next to the artwork, so we can't see ourselves. Um, okay next to it so <laughs> if you could explain it yeah some of my uh, works are kind of big and this is not the biggest one but it's it's big i don't have the right measurements here but uh, i think it's one meter 
70 or one meter. So it's it's kind of not not it's narrow, but it's kind of big. Uh, and 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 so it has an impact because you see the very strong colors, and then you see there's something else there because you as you see it in a gallery, uh, and it's big, so you, you start to see the, the little squares, and then you as you approach, you, you kind of see that squares are not squares, are strips of paper intertwined with other thing. And it, as you get close, you see, oh, that other thing is leaflets, is, is advertising. Uh, and you can see the, the telephone numbers, and you can see the emails that goes on that advertising uh, leaflets. So. What sort of leaflets were they? Um, food leaflets or store leaflets or yeah, I think here may um, I, I usually um, I'm sorry uh, here I, I I use only two kinds of um, leaflets. It's the one left on my car, and so it's buying and selling cars, and the ones left on my mailbox, uh, which could be pizza or uh, something like that. But I only use the ones that real estate. So it's people who want to buy my house or sell my house. Uh, and so the ones with the picture, uh, the, the little dealers uh, is uh, real estate and the others just printed with uh, flat colors and saying compro, which is buy, um, are the, the car uh, dealers. Fantastic. It's about uh, selling and buying and Maybe I'll talk uh, later about that, but it's about um, it has the relationship is about the hunger of consumption. So, okay. So maybe let's talk about further about your artistic pr practice and how does relate it to consumerism. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not everything re relates to consumerism, but there's a, a, a it's a subject that interests me, and so as I told you. Um, it's not, I'm not done. I, I don't know if I ever, when I ever be done with this subject because I still sometimes uh, stop what I'm doing uh, and, and do another of these pieces. So I usually work in several, several different uh, pieces at one time and completely different. So it's about subject that interests me. Um, so it relates to consumerism. It's not like a statement. It's not like, uh, it's kind of a, a personal need I have because I, I keep every uh, byproduct and leftover materials and I just put it aside and system systematically do it like the leaflets. So they were putting it uh, every day in my car and every day I, I, I just put it aside. And one day I look at it and say, okay, so uh, I'm not going to throw this away. This is good paper. I'm going to do something with it. Like kind of um, a response uh, to 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 that consumerism, into that waste of paper, and 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 so that's the relations uh, I have. So I have several pieces done not only with leaflets, uh, but for instance with the remnants of tape that I first used to protect the edges of um, the paper when I paint backdrop backdrops. Back uh, and so I keep the, the yeah, that's one of them. Um, I will show you, it's uh, talking about scale. So if you can see here, so that's the one behind me. I think you can see. It. And so it's quite big. <laughs> and this is all the remains of uh, tape I used to protect the edges of another um, uh, paintings I did. In this particular case, it's a, 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 call, a series part of a series called Ruler Heart. It's a, it's about petroglyphs, and uh, I use the tapes not to hide the margins here, but to yeah. draw the to to hide the drawing itself, because it's the my way of expressing the aging process of the petroglyphs, the wear and the tear of the drawings, scratching the rocks in the way they are slowly uh, uh, being. Uh, hide it by dirt and by time. And so that's the use I, I, I did with um, the tape. So it's hiding like the like time would hide the, the petroglyphs. Uh, another example would be, uh, we talked about the leaflets in this work, but aside with the leaflets, there's this, some very strong color uh, strips of paper. And that one are all leftovers from a previous series I called the cutouts. And the cutouts um, started from the same places. So the petroglyphs, I invented then my own petroglyphs. And then I cut it the, the shapes with the large scissors. Um, wait, yeah. 
<laughs> uh, large. Um, so I invented some kind of petroglyphs. Um, if you go down a bit, um, you'll see that the probably you'll relate to the the the, the prehistoric uh, forms. Uh, and then these were cut with large scissors, like uh, a tribute to Matisse and his just uh, drawings. But every piece of colored paper I did not use then became part of the Esther's work. And so that's the colorful part of the, 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 the work is now in, in WMA. Uh, another example would be uh, destroying a watercolor of a still life I did. It's another Esther's uh, work I call Portal. And uh, what I did is I sometimes have the need to do um, more technical drawing. So looking at a, a still life and painting, in this case, it was like a watercolor. But then uh, I, I don't think that this, that's not my way of uh, expressing myself. I like to do technical drawings, but then I have to give it a twist. And so that's what I did. So I destroyed my own drawings and sometimes I do that uh, into little strips. And then uh, I assembled the little strips into a composition uh, that looks like, for me, looks like a portal because it means like I want to, like a passage. I want to do this, the same. So the, the original drawing is still there, but it's assembled it in a way that you cannot uh, see it. Uh, and so I use also my own uh, drawings with which I, I destroy. Um, and I think that better expresses me as an artist. Carolina? Oh, I think we lost Carolina. Ah, Sorry, <laughs> I disappeared. I disappeared. Yeah. My, my, I'm so yeah. sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> if things happen, they happen. This is 2021. Things happen. So yeah. Yeah. let's I, go with it. Yeah, I, I finished it, uh, about the, the last question. So if you want to ask another one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay, um, so if you already spoke about your artistic I have um, uh, I have a, actually additional question about your uh, series. Mm -hmm. so, um, there are ongoing series, so you start with an artwork, you mm -hmm. uh, one artwork, and then how does it work that you produce another one, another one? Is it because you feel you're not done? with um, what you're doing or does it require more research or um, is this ongoing process um, mm -hmm. not finished or because this is a very interesting um, I think it's series of artworks are really, really interesting because this is part of a, like these are texts that are part of a sentence or, 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 or as a story uh, mm -hmm. even if there is no one common narrative um, so how does it work with yours? Because, yeah, I would really love to know. <laughs> so um, this series, um, um, usually I, I do a lot of research for my, my work. Usually I easily spend half of my practice work doing research. So reading a lot uh, of um, expert opinions on, on subjects that I, I love. And uh, But status is different. Status comes from keeping all the byproducts, keeping all the leftovers of another paintings and drawings I do, or looking at a painting like I was telling uh, that I sometimes have the need to, to do because it's more technical and I think I have to get back to basis. And then I look at it and say, no, it's not, I don't like to express myself this way. So I cut it and reassemble it. So it ha it's the need, I, it's a kind of a need to re re reuse um, uh, materials that would just go to the to garbage. If mm -hmm. uh, uh, and sometimes I don't know why I keep collecting it, and and sometimes I just look at it and say, okay, let's look at it. It's like a puzzle, and I say, okay, um, I'll do something creative about this. Uh, what I'm 
what am I mad about? Oh, I'm mad about the leaflets they put on my car, so I'll do something with it. Uh, what am I mad about? I don't like technical drawing. I Sometimes I feel I have to do it because it helps me sometimes, as I, like I said, get back to the basics, but I don't like technical drawings. It's not who I am, so I cut it and reassemble it. So it's kind of a need to systematically do, not so much to do with research. Uh -huh. The research are... Sometimes the, the, the drawings I do and then I keep leftovers from. So I, I was, uh, before I lost you, we were talking about the, the petroglyphs yeah. and the ancient heart. And that's subjects that are really uh, interested me. And I really study and I go and look up for theses and w which places um, there are there in Portugal and in Europe and in places where I've been. And I take photos and I visit those places. So there's a lot of research there. And then I do the, 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 that work and doing the work, usually I get leftovers and, and stuff that I was not using. And, and that's the things I put aside. And sometimes I go back to and really express myself, but it, it doesn't require studies. Like I'm responding, I'm uh, reacting to something that bothers me. So it happened with the leaflets, it happened to my drawing, mm -hmm. uh, it happens with the tapes, with the drawing beside, uh, in, um, behind me. Mm -hmm. It's a, a way of uh, that why do petroglyphs just di dilute in time? I, I wish they could just be as they were initially scratched on the rocks, but then yeah. time does uh, erase them. So I put my tapes in front of my drawings to like mimic that uh, erasement. So it's it's about that. Um, I will show your portal, one of the Ashterish. Oh, yeah. Uh, because um, I talked about yeah 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 yeah. This is um, bear in mind that this is a drawing, a technical drawing. I, I, mm -hmm. I told you I was drawing in watercolor uh, a still life. So I have some apple, uh, apples in a, a tower, a square towel. Uh, and so I really uh, put the shades and the, the shapes and the light, everything perfect. Well, at least as perfect as I can. And then I said, okay, this is not the way I like to express myself. So I cut it into little strips and I organize the strips. Like for me, it's a portal because it's, I don't want to, express myself that way but this way and it's still the same drawing it's only assembled in a different way and that's more mm, the way I like to express myself so with this uh, artwork you you use um, your own artwork <laughs> to create it with uh, a that um uh, presented at the um endless no. hunger exhibition you use leaflets um mm -hmm. with that I'm, I'm thinking there's this uh, dialogue with people that put those leaflets on your car or in your mailbox, but there's, there's also a dialogue with people that actually created them, designed them. Um, so it's a, it's a, it becomes a part of collage. If we think about the leaflets, they, they, have, um, they have a certain language. Mm -hmm. um, they, they always look in a similar way. Those that um, are designed to promote food, they look in a specific way. That those that um, are designed to um, make us buy clothes or mm -hmm. um, sell a car, they look in a very, very specific way. There's a whole language in it. And then mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you, you, when you use them as a good paper, as a good material for your own artwork, that message that's there just disappears. They become a part of um, a, a bigger scale artwork. And then um, whatever they were saying that was so clear in the beginning, right? Uh, yeah. When they were designing it, that, that the message that was almost screaming at you is just, we can sell your house. Yes. Yeah? Um, it just disappears. More than that. It's also part of a dialogue that you have with uh, yeah. people that made it. And what really bothers me is that uh, I, I think th those leaflets, I understand the need dealers have to contact people and to communicate in a very easy and, and fast way. So big, big font and little words. But among the, the few texts they can put in a leaflet, there uh, is there a personal contact. So I have the personal 
emails uh, and their uh, phones. And I expect they wanted me to call them. And what I do is, is like doing something they probably would not expect, but it's my way of dealing with it. It's just putting that information and not hiding the, the emails, not, nor the photos, nor the, the, the telephone uh, numbers. So, uh, and put it on in my words. So it's kind of my way of dealing it. It's like uh, my response to the relationship they wanted to start, but I don't want to. So it's like, uh, so, so it's, I have a different relationship than they probably would like me to do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, did they ever contact you about, uh, did, any, did any of them let you know that, oh, we've been to this exhibition, we saw our product or our faces or our email addresses no. in the art gallery? No, it never happened. Yeah. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after today, no. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. Because um, <laughs> that would be quite interesting, right? You, you become, you're an you're a um, um, car dealer or a house, uh, 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 you work for a property agency and then you become a part of the artwork, uh, artwork in a, you know, gallery space. Fantastic. I didn't even ask permission because I consider that this is public because they put it in my mailbox. But uh, also you can see it uh, many times in, in when you go to an ATM machine, there's a lot of leaflets that someone just left there for people to yeah. take uh, in my car. So it's in the windshield. So but it's in the public space. Anyone who passes by will see the numbers yeah. and the emails and the photographs. So um, I, can, I think that's it's information that's public, so it is public. They they should they shouldn't share it theoretically, right? But they they put it to, for everyone to see. So yeah. you know, yeah, they they should complain about it. And I yeah. think if I was uh, if if I was selling cars and if if I became um, a part of an artwork, I would be quite happy about it. So you know, it, it's cars and, and real estate, but it could be like pizza or something uh, that take uh, uh, food out or something. So. It's kind of my way of protesting of to these uh, tons of advertising we have, and we have tons of advertising because it's expected from us to go and buy something new, new clothes, mm -hmm. new, uh, food, and houses, and cars, and whatever. So this is a kind of a cycle, and what I like to do is kind of interrupt that cycle, uh, doing something with with it that would not be expected because they expected me like to call them over or write, write an email or just dump in the garbage the, the leaflets. Mm -hmm. And so you can do something different with it. And that's the way I think maybe we can sometimes, I wish, uh, to create awareness and to and some consciousness to this hunger problem, so this consumerism problem. So. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, this is the age of, um, this is the digital age, right? We could send these leaflets uh, in an email. Yeah. We don't but have to have them. They you know. will take the spam and you will not even see it. <laughs> at yeah. least I will. Uh, so they put it in your mail because they know you have to at least take it out and see it. And that's a, that's a way of imposing themselves. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, but th this kind of uh, what we've just been talking about, this leads to another question. What do you think about consumerism? What effect does this endless hunger have on us, on us in general, people or on you as an artist? Um, and what can we do about it? Is there anything we can do about it? Uh, yeah, I think first, I, I think I'm not... Um into psychology and but I, th I my notion is that people want to buy more and more stuff it's not because mm -hmm. they need the stuff or they really want the stuff most of the times if uh, it's about self-indulgence is to have that second moment seconds of moments of they feel good because they have something new but then i think immediately or short after people want something else and it goes on and on and on it's not about possessing things. I think it's about self-indulgence. People need to just tap on their shoulder and, and, well, I have something new. And so obviously this is encouraged by media and advertising and the, the world we live in. What I think we can do is what I was talking, I think we cannot do much, but if we are many people doing not so much, 
uh, doing as whatever we can for as, as little as it is. If we are many people doing it, maybe we, we can do something uh, like mm, create conscious uh, awareness of that's why do you do, do why do you need do, do do you need to do that? I don't yeah. like when you put the advertising in my car so i'll respond to it like a protest using in my art and so if many people i, I know i'm not a musician but if i were i would make a, a song with uh, maybe the words or the numbers or the font so if many uh, especially the, the artistic community if we protest like that it's a positive way of protesting maybe it would uh, generate some awareness i don't know I wish I, I'd like to think so. Um, Portugal has this opinion of a very green um, country where you recycle everything. Is it true? Because um, it, I've seen when I went to Lisbon, I saw I saw almost no garbage in the street. Maybe I was very lucky, but then I saw people um, segregating everything. Yeah, every little thing, so nothing goes to waste. Well. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, we have um, kind of an education uh, from a few years now. So I think new generations uh, are very uh, into it already. Maybe old generation, not so much. I, I say that because maybe my mother doesn't do it. Everybody my age or less will do it probably, especially in cities. So in urban places, for sure, as we segregate our garbage. So plastic and obviously um, glass, plastic, uh, paper, and the the common uh, garbage. So uh, for instance, I, I have the luck to have a little uh, outside space. And I also put my greens, uh, every leftovers of greens outside. So it's called compostage. So I don't know how the, 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 the word in English, but we recycle also our 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 vegetables, uh, not the use, not used part of our vegetables. Um, so I think yeah, maybe uh, and garbage is then recycled. What is to recycle? So the plastic, the paper, and and uh, and the glass. Most of it, I think, is is in in urban places is recycled. Yes. Yeah. So, but then if. Uh... If we didn't produce all of this, we, you know, this is your way of recycling. Um, yeah, kind of. <laughs> your own no, work. The problem is not recycling. The problem is, okay, you recycle, but then if you have the need to produce more and more leaflets, for instance, yeah. you need more trees, but not the right trees. The trees are eucalyptus and so are not the natural species of the forest in Portugal. So what we do, as most of European places I think and do and um, maybe not just in Europe uh, it's worldwide I think it's to uh, not have the trees that we used to have and uh, they, they, they were the ecosystems all ecosystems and now we have huge florists of eucalyptus and because they are richer to make pasta um, uh, paper pasta and and so we change the ecosystem so it's not just about uh the garbage, it's the ecosystem, it's everything. Because if you change the ecosystem, you change the birds. There's birds that I never, we, um, my, par my parents-in-law, they live in the countryside and they remember birds that I don't know. They're not there anymore. Uh, and a lot of uh, small um, reptiles, and there's not because of the cultures intensing, uh, cultivating uh, intensively, the olive trees. And so we are changing the ecosystem. So yeah. it's not just the garbage, it's not just the, the waste, it's everything. So, and that's a huge importance. So. Yeah. We create more space for ourselves. Uh, we create pathways in the forest. We create uh, tourism. Um, we create a global tourist, but we have to go yeah. to certain places and see them, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, in a way, you know, we all participating in it. Like, if we didn't have that, I would never be uh, able to come to Lisbon. <laughs> if I didn't know that, oh, it's a, there's a, this wonderful place, you know, you can go and see it. So I went and, you know, and I saw it. It was not on my way somewhere. I didn't have any business. Yeah. I just went to see it, right? So we do that. We buy, we eat more than we should. Then we go much more to the gym that we have to. 
because we ate too much because yeah. it was and it was also wonderful um and then we we you know we see that cert yeah certain birds they disappeared certain lizards disappeared yeah because it's a social experience because yeah. we need to be social we are social beings and so we need to get together with our friends and our families and you usually we do that not by going to a garden and having a, a promenade we do that by sitting in a table and eating yeah. and and so i think everything is is maybe we have to think about uh, old avis and mm. why not go to uh, walk on the beach with my mother why not go and no okay you come here and have lunch with me and it's um so maybe we think we can change things not drastically but little by little it could be done i think yeah. well i'm an optimistic <laughs> yeah yeah i i do believe as well but then if we go for a walk on the beach there'll be you know we'll be part of a, a group of people that are walking on the beach right mm -hmm. because they decided not to have dinner or or lunch <laughs> so you know there will be new pathways created for us a mm -hmm. bit of a forest will be um destroyed because you know we're not going to walk on mud and so um new promenade um <laughs> i think maybe it's just like we we feel this need that to have more and do more because life is so short we have to work a little bit more we have to achieve stuff so we realize after 10 hours of work like, oh i need to see people because i need them in my life because yeah. i'm a social person yeah. so and i have to work on those relationships and and so we do things that usually you know if we are living like maybe 200 years ago i don't know maybe people, we just think i just think i just have this image of people a few hundred years ago living closer to nature maybe it's just you know this idyllic thought um some sort of um a dream of mine but um i do believe that because we this, the, our structure of life changed so much um that we have to do so many things and we feel that we need that we need new clothes yeah. Um, we need to try this new frappe, we need to try this uh, wonderful trip uh, on a boat uh, mm -hmm. but we need more we always have to have more and <laughs> and, and we get trapped and, and sometimes we feel like oh I don't have enough yeah you never yeah. have it that's a problem yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what inspires you um, do you have? Do you find inspiration uh, in the works of other artists? Hmm. Do you find inspiration in nature? Um, how does it happen? Like, do you find uh, inspiration in actions of other people, like those leaflets, or is this just a reaction to hmm. it? Um, well, I like to be inspired, and uh, there's plenty of things that inspire me. My, um, my work is not about. Uh, what inspires me it's it's a different relation it's about what interests me and when i say it's different it's because uh my work very rare uh, very it's very um it's not usual it's not spontaneous it's not something yeah. very sentimental or emotional on the contrary uh it's very calculated it's deeply studied uh it comes um, mostly from the head not not the heart so um like I told you, I spend more, um, half of my practice is is about uh, studying and and making uh, research, and and looking at different opinions. Not all of them, but different opinions. And I like to see people uh, arguing, uh, even if uh, centuries apart. But one had a, that opinion, and then the other had no. It's like this. No, it's like that. And so, uh, whatever subject I'm I'm working. Uh, on um, it's not about what interests me, and not 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 so much as what inspires me. Um, then, when I read enough, or I think I have read enough, I try. I I, I I don't know why, but I start drawing, and I draw a lot. I make a lots of drawings, and that's why my 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 work usually is in series because I do lots of versions. Uh, and sometimes long after I've done much of the work, I get back to it and do some more. Uh, and so that's why most of the time I have uh, my work categorized in series. Um, what interests me, I, I told you, I, I'm, I'm deeply interested in prehistoric and ancient art. art. Uh, why? I don't know why. It's uh, why 
did um, cavemen put together two pieces of rock or a set of rocks? And was it religious? Was it for shelter? Uh, why uh, did they start making some scratches on the rocks and, and painting caves? Uh, again, was it religious? Was it a school to teach the youngsters where was the, the game? Um, and so on. So I like to think about it. And then I, I like to read expert opinions and one say one thing and then the other says opposite. Uh, but then I like that difference of, of ar that arguing. Uh, and and by studying that, sometimes I, I, try, I start drawing and I start uh, somehow expressing it. Um, and prehistoric and ancient art. And when I say ancient art, it goes to the medieval art. I, 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 I'm... I, I, I would like to understand why after the Greek and the Roman classics with were perfect proportions. They look like they are huge pieces, like five meters, David, but then they are so well proportioned. But then you go to medieval art and they didn't care about proportions. They, they went back ages. You look at, it looks like made by children. Uh, and, and uh, so I like to say, why did they go back? And so they were so perfect and they had the need to go back and not do it perfect. They, want, they didn't want people to look and see the perfect body. And so it was a lot of religious art at the time. So it has to be with, with, with religion issues. Uh, so that interests me a lot. And another, or at least the, the new subject that I'm really kind of studying now, it's time, time with a capital T. So it's time, the passage of time, the different philosophic theories about time from Plato to Aristotle to St. Augustine, Kant, Bergson. So they have always all different opinions and that interests me a lot. And my new work would be probably about something about time and time passing and um, that conceptual philosophic uh, things. It's not about the, the mechanical time of a watch. It's, it's a bit more deep than that. So it interests me. So I think what inspired me are themes or subjects that somehow get my attention. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And I, I, think it, it, I, I think it's very smart to um, think of art, uh, think of the time, Mm -hmm. um, uh, when you create a series, because um, different parts of a series, they kind of um, indicate time when when you were working on it. So things change, right? Um, um, I cannot see to see this when you when you start and uh, when you're in a <laughs> process. So great. Um, um, because I, I already, um, guys, I already spoke to Patricia before, and then I said I wanna when this this whole twenty twenty one, and I don't know, maybe hopefully not twenty twenty two is over. Yeah. Um, this craziness. I'm going to um uh, Lisbon, and um, I I want to see. I want to see. Yeah, I want to well. see a stylish nice in a in a life because yeah. um this will be fantastic. Um, <laughs> um, but um. So when you make your work, um, what sort of reaction do you want from your audience? How do you, do you want to inspire them or do you want to start a dialogue with them? Because mm. I feel like there's a dialogue between you and uh, those um, graphic designers that made uh, leaflets and um, um, pizza delivery people that gave it to you. Um, sneakily, and then um, also your previous artworks and um, 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 artworks of um, ancient and different authors. Yeah. Um, so, do you? So, on that part, there's a dialogue. Do you want to have a dialogue with your audience, or um, what sort of reaction? Do we I, would, have? I would love to, um, but I'm not sure if I if it's it's possible because. Um, when I, I, I exhibit my work, mm. oh, oh, it's echoing. <laughs> There's an echo. Is it? Yeah. Oh. I echo. Not anymore. That's so good. Uh, so um, when I, uh, when I, I exhi exhibit my work, I think audience will not um, fully understand. It's not self-explanatory. So it will mm. not 
fully understand what is it about. And sometimes I don't have titles. I have like subtitles, like no, uh, the elements work of the Ishtarish, uh, and between brackets leaflets, and people will probably not assume what is it about. Now, leaflets are kind of easy. But if you see the, the ones I, I told you, the, the cutouts through series or the ruler heart series, it's not self-explanatory. People might not understand. Uh, and so I don't, I don't think if I'm, I will be very successful, but what I wish to inspire people is to make people talk about the same subject, to agree, mm -hmm. to disagree, to go and, and see and, and have the urge to go themselves and study the themes and the questions I am posing. And uh, perhaps uh, that will be not, not possible. And so the relationship I, I'll have with uh, my audience would be inspiring on more aesthetical uh, aesthetical values so mm -hmm. because they like it or because they don't like it because they feel uh it's not perfectly done or it's very well done so it's more than a aesthetical value not not so much maybe not so much into the deep subject i studied uh, unless they have the i have the chance to talk and and ask the questions and be overwhelmed answering so yeah um, so let I was supposed to uh, uh, I wanted to show uh, your cutouts. Um, mm. so um, and then I disappeared from because my computer <laughs> decided to kick, kick me out, and I was really confused about it. So let me just <laughs> show them now uh, because they are <laughs> because they're wonderful. Um, and, um, do I have it it says uh, I have an information here from your website that that's mm. fifty seven. Uh, uh, by 36 centimeters so they are quite big yeah this uh, uh, it's the standard uh, a2 uh, yeah yeah the standard a2 so yeah uh, so they are quite big uh, there are plenty of them I, uh, I'm not sure but um, it's, it's a, a large series and so uh, if we put it on a wall it's a big big uh, panel of um, of drawings and they have a kind of a rhythm to it. Uh, I've never exhibited the whole collection, so mm -hmm. I, I exhibit like I don't know, like twenty or something. But it's it's uh, for me it's interesting to see how one uh, um, kind of um, introduces the next one. So if you uh, in, all of them are petroglyphs that uh, I created myself, inspired on the petroglyphs that I. Uh, studied uh, most of them in it's about a place in Norway called Alta mm -hmm. and the petroglyphs are carved in red in red ink so it's the, it, by the sea so it's a I would love to go there it's almost North Pole so <laughs> I'm, I will I, will, I was just reading about it and I want to go there but then COVID never uh, uh, stopped the world so it's not yet been possible I will go there for sure mm -hmm. but then after reading the on, online and the books uh, uh, about Alta in Norway I drew a lot of petroglyphs myself uh, about my creative beings so it's and um I then cut it with scissors so, um, because I wanted to make it collage. So this is a collage uh, works, uh, large collage works. And that I, I was explaining that the you see the, the yellows and the reds and that's the, I, I painted large uh, sheets of paper with those mm -hmm. colors, hundreds of them, and then cut it the, 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 the drawings uh, form to make the, this series. And so I had plenty of leftovers which then I use to make several of my Esther's uh, works. It's uh, this red that probably uh, goes into the, the the work that's in the WMA right now. This red, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, um, you have positive cutouts, and how many of them there are uh, in general? This one, uh, the whole collection is in my website. I think there, yeah. there's about almost forty or something. Uh, and it's positives and negatives because sometimes mm -hmm. the same drawing uh, is on a white, it's, it's a collage on a white piece of paper and then the opposite. It's a black piece of paper and then the same uh, drawing. And then uh, I have uh, another one that I call just the negatives. So I mm -hmm. call it all the positives. Uh, um, 
even though there's some negatives in there, but I call the negatives the ones that were made with big chunks of paper with um, re um, uh, remainings of, of uh, other paintings and glue. And when you go to the website, uh, these mm -hmm. ones are at the bottom of that page and the ones first uh, are the negatives and are kind of more abstract. So you don't see it's this one. You, here yeah. you so much see the drawings of the of the petroglyphs because these mm -hmm. are pieces of paper which I cut it to make the forms of the petroglyphs. I like these ones a lot um, because this is um, out of the context. It's again, it's the it's like the portal. The drawing is there, but again, mm -hmm. it's assembled in the, such a different way that you cannot see it. And so the, the first we saw, you can even see if you look and say, oh, I, I understand this is a, a creature or this is a boat. And here you cannot understand what it is. But it's the yeah. same because they were, one came from the other. So, yeah. Um, but, but, you know, people always look for um, shapes. Yeah. Um, yeah. We are, we are, it's oh, not it's that we, we, we don't, we want to or not. It's just we are made like this. Yeah, this is yeah. who we are. We always gonna look for a narrative. Yeah. We always gonna think um, about linear, um, yeah. in a linear way, and then we always look for shapes and sizes and yeah. to try to understand what's happening. And yeah. then we go into okay, if we cannot find it, we we cannot find <laughs> what we're looking for. We just are gonna start thinking about colors. We're yeah. gonna think about uh, process of making, but this is few steps further yeah. so this is how we um i think um, work i'm gonna um, just leave us here if there are any um questions from anybody um guys don't hesitate we are here um my computer is not gonna kick us out anymore uh hopefully <laughs> and, <laughs> um please uh, please go ahead um yeah, quite fine with time, actually. Um, I don't see any uh, any questions. Let's go to them. I was looking at the chat, no questions. There's nothing here, no. unfortunately. OK, um, so if you do you want, do you have any statement? Because I think we, we've been talking for 15 minutes now, which mm -hmm. is really nice. Um, yeah with a break dramatic break um is there <laughs> is there anything you would like to add is there is there anything you would like yeah, to tell I'll, us extra i would like to to first of all thank thank uh, the virtual museum of atropomoceno for the opportunity uh it's been a very strange uh year or year and a half um, um, because uh, as an artist we don't have Usually don't, we don't get many opportunities to exhibit our work, uh, but then with COVID, it's been very, uh, unfortunately, no, everything was closed. So galleries and exhibition places, so everything closed. So obviously we, we turn to internet and virtual uh, opportunities. And uh, this one was an excellent opportunity because sometimes we see the links and the open calls and uh, there's ones so not, that, that are not so satisfying and working with you, I was telling you be, before we go live, it has been a, a wonderful experience. Um, you're very professional, you're very, yeah, I, I really loved it. And I think uh, for the opportunity to be in, uh, in that exhibition um, and keep the good work. <laughs> and yeah, um, I was asking if you have also not just online, kind of another version of the virtual museum but you already told me not yeah. that would be amazing that would be amazing because it's a diff totally different way of working right you you can yeah. you can play with the light you can drill you know holes in what i love like doing this um so you can work on a physical space yeah. on the other hand um you know virtual space allows you to do things that you wouldn't be able to afford in a gallery and also that will be dangerous because of insurance and sometimes physically impossible. Yeah. Um, so you have that, but then artworks, they, they're just um, photos of artworks yeah. on yeah. small scale. So you don't really see a scale. So 
great. So, yeah, thank you. It, yeah. It's never perfect, but then fantastic. It was lovely to see you. It was wonderful to uh, meet you. It was fantastic to talk to you. And um, guys, thank if you, you still haven't seen, <laughs> great. <laughs> if you still haven't seen the exhibition, and if you want to um, see Patricia's um, estate, uh, um, just uh, in a virtual uh, form. Please, please come to our exhibition, start walking or just get into this cornfield, get lost in it, walk around, look around, and then find a stairish. <laughs> and um, just maybe if you have a chance, you, you'll be able to read the phone number of those agents and you can call them if you want to, if you want to sell a house, if buy, not, a car. <laughs> buy a car, um, yeah. But um, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Carolina. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.